Remember when the 2019 Joker movie came out? How everyone said it was a dangerous movie, unfit for human consumption, and how so many people were freaking out thinking that young single men were going to go and watch this film and go crazy and run havoc in society just like the Joker did in the film. But the movie came and went and didn't bring about the end of society. Yeah, well, looking back at it, it all seems kind of silly now, right? Well, believe it or not, but Joker isn't the first Batman-related movie to bring total chaos among its release. As 27 years earlier in 1992, Batman Returns came out, and it was easily one of the most anticipated movies of that year. After all, this was the sequel to the insanely popular 1989 Batman movie. However, when Batman Returns did come out, it caused pandemonium in the media and among parents' groups claiming the movie was way too violent and disturbing to be a superhero movie. The summer's big movie is Batman Returns, and it is already creating controversy. Some parents contend that Batman Returns, which is rated PG-13, is actually being marketed for younger children, and the movie is just too violent. With McDonald's even ditching their Happy Meal tie-ins with the film, because there was a collective fear that Batman Returns was going to destroy our children. It was very violent. It was a total attack against kids. Spoilers, it didn't. I was a kid when I first saw Batman Returns and I loved it. However, in today's episode of Weird Tales, we are going to look into the Batman Returns controversy. And just how, looking at it in hindsight, the whole thing kind of looks ridiculous now. So be prepared to hear people say, Oh, won't someone think of the children as we check it out. So of course, as always, let's start from the beginning and look into just what was Batman Returns. Well, the story of Batman Returns goes back to the first Batman movie, which was released in 1989. It was directed by the then new upcoming director, Tim Burton, and it totally reimagined Batman. Although comic book readers of the time were familiar with the darker, more brutal approach to Batman, to most people, their image of the character was the campy 1960s TV show, where we would see Batman go surfing and do the funny bat watusi. But this new version of Batman was dark, brooding, and violent. And it had Bob and his terrifying power kick of doom. Yeah, you don't mess with that. Starring Michael Keaton as Batman and Jack Nicholson as the Joker, Batman 1989 became the highest grossing movie of that year, along with merchandise galore. So naturally, Warner Brothers wanted lightning to strike twice, and got to work on Batman 2. Some script drafts were being put together. One in particular involved a plot where the Penguin was looking for lost treasure, which turned out to be buried underneath Wayne Manor or something strange like that. Look, it was clear that there was an element that was missing, and that element was Tim Burton, who was off making a different movie at that time, that being Cabin Boy. So Warner Brothers asked Burton to ditch Cabin Boy and to return to make Batman Returns. But Burton didn't want to make Batman movies, he wanted to make Burton movies. So Warner Brothers were like, hey, that's no problem. You'll have complete creative control. Batman Returns can be entirely a Tim Burton movie. So he said, okay, and got to work on the second Batman movie, which was going to be entirely Burton's own unique vision. And yes, if Batman 1989 was a Batman movie, then Batman Returns was definitely a Tim Burton movie. It had his use of dark gothic visuals, German expressionism, and themes of outsiders, or freaks, clashing with the constructs of society. In 1992, everyone was eagerly awaiting the release of Batman Returns with great anticipation. After all, if it's anything like the first movie, it's bound to be a hit. We're at the historic Chinese theater on Hollywood Boulevard for what promises to be the biggest movie premiere of the year. People have come from all over the world because 
Batman Returns. So much so that McDonald's agreed to have Happy Meal tie-ins with Batman Returns and sell Batman toys with their Happy Meals. After all, kids love Batman, so this would have seemed like a win for Mackie D's. However, after watching the actual movie, McDonald's were horrified. Now, McDonald's have done Happy Meal tie-ins with other movies and TV shows in the past, like E.T. and The Muppet Babies. However, Batman Returns was definitely not E.T. and The Muppet Babies. For a start, E.T. and The Muppet Babies didn't feature characters puking up green slime. They found Batman Returns to be way too violent and inappropriate to make Happy Meal toys about. But what really did it for McDonald's was the penguin vomiting up green slime. McDonald's thought that was gross, and who on earth was going to want to go and eat burgers after that? It's not very appetizing, admittedly. So kids probably weren't likely to ask their parents to pull into their local McDonald's after watching Batman Returns. So McDonald's cancelled their lineup with Batman Returns, which was a big deal, especially to Warner Brothers. And from there, Batman Returns was shrouded in controversy. People were observing Batman Returns with great shock at what they thought was a movie aimed at small kids. A movie involving the penguin biting some guy's nose, cats chewing on someone's bloody fingers, Batman having no problem killing people, and Catwoman slicing up some guy's face. In addition to that, Batman Returns detractors just thought the movie felt and looked weird. When she drives by the movie, she says she wants to go see the movie, and when I tell her she can't see it, she bursts out into tears. So this brought about a panic by certain organizations and parent groups who thought that Batman Returns was too nasty for children, with certain campaigns starting to try and sway parents away from showing Batman Returns to their kids, as it was considered too horrific. People were saying, just how can you sell toys based on this movie to children? It seemed that by some particular parties, there were pleas for the public to ditch Batman Returns as McDonald's did. Now, to be fair, although back then we mainly associated Batman with small children, Batman Returns actually wasn't a film made for small children. I mean, after all, it was rated PG-13. However, there were supposedly even calls to give Batman Returns an R rating. This leads me to what I find to be the most interesting hit piece on Batman Returns. This talk show segment which was broadcast when Batman Returns came out. This clip was uploaded on YouTube several years ago by a channel called Little Cosgrove, where we see parents and other members of organizations explaining why Batman Returns is terrible. I'm going to give some of my own thoughts and opinions on what's going on here. But please note, this is not definitive answers as to what is going on here, but just merely my own perspectives. First off, there's this little boy who was described as being a junior movie critic. And I don't know, his speech just doesn't feel natural. It's like he's acting or going off a script or being told what to say. He's not really saying things that a child would say. In my opinion, of course. Remember, this is all subjective on my part. It was very violent. It was a total attack against kids. Um, I was I was actually a little bit scared, and I have never been scared of a movie like this before. Yeah. This kid even went as far as to say that Batman Returns is more violent than Terminator 2. Yeah. I came out of Terminator 2, fine. Yeah. <laughs> a movie that had scenes like this, and this, and this. Then we had this concerned parent and her young daughter, who left the theatre after 30 minutes of watching Batman Returns. And once again, this little girl seems a bit rehearsed. Yeah, did you have bad dreams afterward or not? No. No, but it wasn't, you didn't want to stick around to the end, that's for no. sure. Is it just me or when she answers no after being asked if the movie gave her bad dreams, does it look like she looks up at her mum as if to ask, did I give the right answer? Followed by that really awkward smirk. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Yeah, did you have bad dreams afterward or not? No. No, but it wasn't, you didn't want to stick around to the end, that's for no. sure. Either way, I want to make it clear, I'm not picking on these kids, by the way. Then this funny thing happens from our junior critic. See it, how many times have you seen it? I saw it twice to get a real good view of it. Yep, you heard correctly. This little boy hated the movie so much, he saw it twice. Going to see a movie twice, eh? Hey? Well, I've never heard of someone disliking a movie so much they saw it twice. And it's kind of funny that this kid is like, I don't want kids to watch this movie. Meanwhile, I'm gonna watch it twice. Maybe, just maybe, this kid didn't really hate it after all. I mean, after all, he saw it twice. The reply even got a chuckle from the audience. It's his job, no snickering, he had to see it twice, right? Then you had this guy saying the movie was too dark for a superhero film. 
Oh, the irony, considering what superhero movies would become. And he felt that Batman Returns was full of innuendo. But if you saw the 60s show, you'll see that that too was also full of innuendo. And he said it had, quote, extreme violence. And the film was full of little dirty, really raunchy little dirty jokes and lots of extreme violence. Okay, seriously, is the violence in Batman Returns really extreme? It's honestly a really interesting piece of television and I'm in no way berating it. So go to Little Cosgrove's channel to watch the full clip. And if any of the now grown up kids from this talk show are watching, let me know if that's how you really felt or if there was any, you know, prompting. Looking back at it now, especially compared to modern superhero movies, I ask, was Batman Returns really that bad? I mean, yeah, it was dark and it had violence, but no more than other action-adventure movies of that time, like, say, the Indiana Jones movies. But the way that some of these people were going on about it, you would think that Warner Brothers were trying to pass Texas Chainsaw Massacre as a kid's movie. In all honesty, was Batman Returns even worse than Batman 1989? After all, that film itself was also pretty dark and violent. You see Batman murder people, a heap of innocent civilians die from toxic gas, and a scene where the Joker literally burns a man alive and then proceeds to taunt his charred remains, which I think is way more horrific than anything seen in Batman Returns. I wonder if McDonald's reaction started at all. Maybe once they disowned Batman Returns, people jumped on the bandwagon and followed in suit. I think what the real issue was, was the perception of Batman at the time. I think some of the older people had memories of the 1960s TV show and even the 1950s comic books, where Batman was more playful and slapstick, and even more like a family-friendly spoof. And maybe they just couldn't understand this new darker rendition and it was clashing with their own memories of what Batman was to them as kids. A lot of the reason that we went to see it was based on what my memories of Batman were from when I was a child. It was not real violence, rather inferred violence, and it was justice and morality and a lot of other issues that I think are, are missing from many of the films that we see today. And certainly from Batman Returns, certainly in your from view. Certainly Batman. But our kids need hope, they need real heroes, they need a bright future. But regardless, the reaction led to the safer, dumbed-down Joel Schumacher Batman entries, which weren't embraced, particularly Batman and Robin, which caused a huge backlash from fans, in which in the aftermath, superhero movies became darker and more violent and something to be taken more seriously. So whether you like Batman Returns or not, it seems that Tim Burton was ahead of the curve. He paved the way for what superhero movies would become. It's just that the older generation needed to catch up and were unwilling to at the time. And so Batman Returns became a casualty of this new direction that the superhero genre would go down and become the accepted norm. A norm of which at the time, many people, at no fault of their own, hadn't caught up with yet. Now yes, Batman Returns wasn't the first dark superhero movie, but it was the first big mainstream one to get that recognition and backlash for being so. But from there onwards, superhero movies were never going to be the same. The climate of the superhero movie genre was changing, and Batman Returns sort of paved the way. To the point where, as mentioned, Batman Returns is quite mild now in comparison. Anyway, I'm Minty, and the Batman Returns controversy is a weird tale in pop culture. <laughs>